So today we're finally setting up the new anchor, finally ordered some new chain. I've ordered 60 meters of 8 millimeter DIN 766 chain uh, the, with a braking strength I think of four and a half tons, which is fine for around the Stockholm archipelago and around the Baltic. Once we, um, well, one day when we choose to go around the world, we'll probably get 100 meters of chain on and some uh, road warp as well. But uh, that's a different day. We just need some chain on for now. The original chain that came with the boat was 30 meters, so we needed an upgrade to uh, 60 meters. So yeah, just uh, just setting it all up now. Tanya's up there with the windlass, ready to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a Vulcan 20 kilo anchor. It's going to be awesome, I think, and um, we've got an ultra uh, ultra swivel as well. It's the slightly bigger swivel, can take eight or ten millimeters of chain, and it's the really strong one as well. I think this breaks at something like five and a half tons or something like that. So it's a really good one, and it's heavy as well, so it gives the anchor just a little bit more weight also. Um, but yeah, all that's left to do now is just uh, take this bundle of chain up there. Let me know if it skips. It shouldn't do. Come on, keep, keep going. Go on until it stops. It stops. Okay, all right, that'll do. Yeah, well, there we have it. New anchor, new chain installed. One step towards the water, for sure. We're excited now. Only a week to go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I've been a bit distant over the last month or two. Things have been very busy in our lives. We've uh, moved everything out of our apartment now we're, and now we're pretty homeless, living on the boat and at friends' houses. So yeah, I'm trying to start the channel up again and start editing pretty soon, so look out for that. Anyway, I just wanted to show you these new uh, heat shrink tube connectors that I found for um, connecting two wires together, basically. You heat them up with a heat gun here, and the solder inside actually uh, solders the two wires together, and the heat shrink tube actually makes a really strong waterproof connection. There's been some mixed reviews on these, but I've had some really good experience with these connectors so far. I'd recommend them. All right, so this is the bilge pump installation, and you can see down here we've installed the mega pump of dreams, the Johnson L4000, I think it's called. But um, yeah, the installation has gone relatively successful. There's a 38 millimeter pipe or an inch and a half pipe. You do have the option to put a two inch pipe here as well, um, but we didn't want that bigger pipe running through the boat and that bigger through hole coming out of the back of the uh, transom either. So as you can see, I've just uh, seeker flexed a piece of plywood and um, painted it as well just to seal it up there, just to uh, secure that bilge pump there. That should be more than fine. They do suggest putting really long screws and a really strong um, sort of bond down to the down to the wood there. The same with the sensor as well. Now this sensor is um, um, just screwed into this little piece of wood here, and again I seeker flex that there. And when you're installing the bilge pump, obviously. It's really important as well that you can you protect your connections here, um, these ones. You can see that hands are there with the original bilge pump or the first one. Uh, they've put it all in conduit and they've put these big, uh, what do you call them, sticky mounts on there as well so that you can uh, cable tie all of the wire in there. That's in case something hits the bilge pump and um, damages it in any way. I haven't put the conduit there, but I have uh, tied it in as well as I possibly can. This this cable is fairly strong, so it should be okay. But I have put two um, two big cable ties around the top of the uh, bilge pump here, just to protect that wire. Because if anything snags this, I just I just want there to be no potential disconnection here or anything like that. So this this is pretty pretty goddamn solid in there now. Pretty happy with the installation so far now. I've got this big bilge pump as a secondary. This one as a primary. Um, the float pump down here uh, will go off first, I think. And then this one will uh, take over if the water intrusion is severe. One more thing to say about this installation, of course, when you're installing bilge pumps, it's always important to have a constant rise on the pipe here. And unfortunately, because of the way that the Johnson is, they tried to put a rise when it come out of the pipe there. 
um, but I have to go slightly down and then start going up anyway so there's just a slight little dip here um, I don't think it should be causing any problems with airlocks or anything like that but um, at the same time if the bilge pump does get used and there's water going to go in the pipe uh, the water's going to stay in that part of the pipe there so to be honest, I don't ever intend to use this bilge pump. If, that's, if that bilge pump comes into operation, we've got bigger problems than uh, a little bit of water stuck in the pipe there. Um, so when it comes to the winterization, we'll just have to stick a rag down there and get it out, but it's not a big deal. I'm really happy with the installation. I'm just going to do the uh, other end now on the chart table there and um, get it all installed and I'll, I'll show you how it works. And well, that's the bilge pump installation finished now. Check that down here. It's the only convenient place I could think of putting it, to be honest, but uh, there we go. To arm it, we just arm it there and turn it off and to test. Very loud, it's good. That'll really alert us uh, if there's any water coming into the bilge there. I've just got to ideally test the sensor down there to make sure that the alarm goes off um, when it should, but um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the installation.